Hey guys, Dusty here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you three different lacing techniques for your running shoes. Oftentimes you get a new shoe and bring it home and you'll think maybe it's too narrow, it's too wide, you're having some toe issues. And sometimes instead of replacing the shoe or returning it, you can actually fix the problem by lacing it up a little bit differently. So there's more than the three techniques that I'm going to show you that you can use to lace up your shoe, but I'm going to show you three of the more common ones. And we're going to start with the heel lock or runner's loop, and that's a great one to really lock in the heel if you have some issues with your heel slipping in and out of the shoe. I'm also going to show you diagonal lacing, which is a great one if you have some big toe issues like some bruising or you get sore toes after your run. And then lastly, I'm going to show you parallel lacing, which is great if your feet swell a lot and the shoe starts to feel too tight. And we'll get right into it with one of the more common ones, the heel lock the heel lock or runner's loop and I've talked about this plenty on my on this channel um, this is definitely the most common lacing technique and not all shoes have this but most shoes do and that is this extra eyelid on your shoes most of you at home probably have this on a pair of your runners and this technique requires that extra loop okay so the shoe is laced up normally all the way to the top and now instead of crossing over once more into that very final eyelid what I want you to do is go back in on the same side make sure you leave a little loop go back in on the other side leave a little loop and then I want you to take one end of a shoelace and put it into the loop on the other side do it on both sides and it'll look something like this and then what you're gonna want to do it to tighten it is pull straight down and when you do up your laces you'll want this loop snug against the shoe you won't want it loose like that you want it tight if you have some issues with your heel slipping out of a shoe definitely try this out and I hope it works for you okay now we're gonna get into some lacing techniques that require a bit more effort on your part um, for bo both of the next two techniques I'm you're going to need to fully unlace your shoes and let's get into the next one which is diagonal lacing. Okay, so this technique is really good when you want to relieve some pressure from your big toe. And this is actually a pretty easy lacing technique. So what I want you to do is fully unlace your laces. You can leave it laced up in the first eyelid though. And then on the medial side of the shoe or the inside of the shoe where your big foot is, I want you to take that shoelace and skip all the eyelids and go up to the very final one. And that side of the lace is done now. Um, you'll notice you'll probably have a huge amount of lace left over. So you'll want to fix that on the other side because the other side you're going to go through every single eyelid. There, I left myself enough room to tie up my shoe on that side. Now with this really long lace on the bottom, on the lateral side, you're going to lace up your shoe normally. So cross over, go diagonally straight across go diagonally straight across and all the way up till you're done the shoe there now you can see what we did so diagonal lacing from big toe all the way up here and this can help alleviate some big toe issues if you have any it's not an issue that's as common as heel slipping but if you do have some big toe issues give uh, diagonal lacing a shot okay lastly I'm going to show you parallel lacing and this is going to be great if you have feet that swell up quite a bit or your shoe just feels maybe a little bit too narrow um, there are other techniques if you have a really wide foot to alleviate some pressure but Fine, this one's kind of more the common one. So if your shoes do feel too tight, or if your feet are prone to swelling quite a bit, then uh, give parallel lacing a shot. Okay, so for parallel lacing, I'll show you with a shoe totally unlaced how to do it. Okay, so to get started, you'll take the end of the lace, go in one side into the first eyelid. Take the, an take the other end of the lace and go in the other side, so from the outside to in. Make sure you have an even amount of lace on both sides. Okay, now with the medial side or the inside, you'll want to skip the second eyelid and go into the third from inside out and then cross over. But when you go in across the shoe, go from the outside in. And 
After that, you'll skip the fourth eyelid and go into the fifth one. So inside out when you go back in on the same side and then cross over diagonally again from outside in. And then once you get here, you can just go to that final eyelid on the same side and there, that, that side of the lace is done. Now that makes the remaining one real easy because you just go in whatever eyelids are left. So you should have the second eyelids available. So go from the inside out, cross over. Remember, whenever you cross over, you go from the outside in. Then we're gonna go to the fourth eyelid. So inside out, cross over, outside in. There, now you're, you'll skip two and go back in on the same side. And there you have it, that's parallel lacing. This is gonna relieve a lot of pressure in the shoe if you find that it's too narrow or your feet are swelling up a little bit too much. And doing the parallel lacing can be the trickiest one to do. So I recommend either watch this video over a bunch of times or just do a Google search and find an actual website that has a graphic. Some of the graphics out there on the internet are really helpful. Hope these techniques help you. They're not something a lot of runners know about, but it is an option to fix whatever the issue is, and it doesn't have to result in you wasting a couple hundred dollars on a pair of shoes that doesn't work, when all you maybe had to do was just lace them up a bit differently. So if you like these tips, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe for more everything running triathlon and nutrition related.